The featherweights have been fun in 2016, and our second uh, fight of the year candidate comes from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, becoming a boxing hotbed. We had Carl Frampton moving up in weight to 126 pounds to take on the undefeated Leo Santa Cruz. Guys heading into this fight with Frampton moving up after unifying the titles at 122 against Scott Quigg in a fight that didn't right. deliver what we expected. What did you expect against Leo Santa Cruz for Frampton? There were a lot of questions, and more of them seem to be surrounding Frampton, who uh, is a very talented and electric fighter, though that wasn't evident in that fight uh, with Scott Quigg. And so not only was he moving up in weight, he's facing this volume puncher in Leo Santa Cruz, had to come across the pond from Northern Ireland to do it. And I think there, it was right to say the burden of proof was kind of on Carl Frampton for this fight. And what he showed us is what many, uh, including me, when I watched him uh, fight in uh, Northern Ireland on several occasions and even did a couple of his fights, what many of us felt was that he is an elite fighter and he showed that in this fight. What did you expect going in from Leo Santa Cruz's uh, side of things? Well, I think, you know, the thing about Leo is we always knew he was El Terremoto, you know, which means earthquake in, earthquake yeah. in Spanish. And, you know, he comes and brings that heavy, heavy, tremendous pace and he kind of suffocates you. He, kinda, he starts to outwork you and you start to kind of fade and you, 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 you uh, utterly, you suffocate, you drown, you know, and, and his work rate, you know, he's not a big, a big one punch guy, but eventually if you are so fatigued, the beating that prolonged becomes a prolonged beating. And then a lot of times you, you get stopped. I was I was questioning if Frampton had the lungs to, to deliver at, at that pace. You know, one thing about Santa Cruz that stands out to me, he kind of attacks you in one at one pace, maybe in one gear, which is straight ahead all the time. And I think a guy who knows how to give him some angles and change a little bit of distance and and and, and pounce in those quick moments can throw off his punch output in that way. But you got to know how to change the distance correctly. I wasn't sure if Frampton was going to have the lungs to be able to make those kind of maneuvers. One thing I was thinking about with Frampton though was maybe the added weight, because he's moving up in weight, maybe he really has been struggling so much at junior featherweight that the added weight will help him with this kind of endurance. And if so, does he have the ability to now hold off the terremoto? And uh, we, you know, we find out. Yeah, for the second consecutive month, the Barclays Center in Brooklyn played host to another instant classic. Ladies and gentlemen from Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, the time has come for the bout you've all been waiting for. Carl the Jackal Frampton! It's a convivial atmosphere here. Carl Frampton, the pride and joy of Northern Ireland, and his supporters are loud and proud. Making his way to the ring, here is the undefeated WBA featherweight champion of the world, Leo El Terremoto Santa Cruz. He seems very confident, very motivated, and of course, he's very inspired by the fact that his father, suffering from cancer, is with him. It's the main event for the 126-pound championship. The bell in round one, we are scheduled for 12. Leo Santa Cruz said he wanted to come out and try and pressure Frampton and push him back. He doesn't feel like he deals with it. His father told him to box more. We'll see which he does. Now there's the left hook of Frampton and then the nice jab. Frampton's left hook could be a very potent weapon in this fight. are each trying to light each other up. But this fight's got some great action so far. Under a minute left in the second. Santa Cruz looking to use that reach advantage as Frampton sweeps in with the right hand. That oh, the left top of the year. And staggers Santa Cruz. A tremendous start to this championship fight. Creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. Yeah. He's just trying to time you all the time. Just keep changing the rhythm. Carl Frampton has a powerful hook. He will land it there as a short counter left hook and on the inside. And then he followed up with two very good shots, including the body work. Power combination from Frampton. 
Frampton is landing at a high percentage. Oh, lead right uppercut by Carl Frampton. Right hand, and now Santa Cruz comes back with a one-two. Leo Santa Cruz is lunging, and that is not a good thing for him to do. We're through five in Brooklyn. Well, it didn't take Carl Frampton long to showcase his power at a new weight class. He shook Leo Santa Cruz in that second round, guys. What did you think of the first half of the fight? He did, and that left hook that he landed was a portent of things to come in terms of how he would fight this fight. Uh, you know, Paulie alluded to the fact that you can kind of make a volume puncher uh, less of a volume puncher if you if you operate in a certain way. And that's what Carl Frampton did in this fight. And I think Leo Santa Cruz may have been even a bit surprised at the technique that Frampton showed. And we knew from the get-go uh, watching this fight that Frampton's performance was more dynamic than the one he had against uh, Scott Quick. And by demonstrating that power early, I think, he sent a message to Leo Santa Cruz. What was your takeaway of the first five rounds? Yeah, I, I thought he did send a message with that with that power shot, with that power hook he hurt Leo with, and, and, and it'll make Le a guy like Leo question whether he should just keep coming forward recklessly. But also, I thought Carl came in with a very good game plan. They were ready to execute a much faster pace yeah, fight, you know, right. this time around. I think they were ready for it. I think the, they knew they would have the extra oxygen, the extra endurance being they moved up in weight. And I thought they had a very good game plan. Uh, Shane McWiggan, McWiggan, his trainer, and uh, and and, uh, and Carl, you know, together, I think they, they really came up with a really good game plan. And I thought it, it really threw off a lot of what Leo wants to do. What about the fact that we did see Santa Cruz land some mm -hmm. shots in the first half of the fight and Carl Frampton took them well? Well, that was an issue because even Elias Santa Cruz is not a monstrous one-punch knockout guy, or he does have some pop in his punch. And with Frampton coming up in weight, that was one of the questions. Could Santa Cruz, you know, hurt him or stun him with punches? And yes, he did land some good ones, and it didn't affect uh, uh, Frampton. And that was why he was able to get off to a very quick start in this fight. When we look back, and I know it's been a few months now, we don't score the fight, but what... What was your what was the temperature in terms of scoring through the first half of the fight? How did you see it, Al? Well, I thought Frampton had got off to a very good start, uh, and I thought he won most of the rounds. Now, one of the judges scored it and had him winning all five of the first rounds. He was ahead by three on one scorecard and ahead by one on another. Pretty widespread, and it would stay through the fight a wider spread than you would like to see. But there's no question in my mind Frampton won most of the first five rounds. What did you think? Who, who were you more with, the, the guy who gave him all five rounds or the one who saw it by one? No, I, I was kind of in the middle there. You know, you, one guy had it 3-2, one guy had it four rounds to one, and one guy had it five rounds to zero. I was probably at about, about 4-1. I don't remember correctly exactly how I had it. I think I had it about 4-1. But I do remember thinking Carl is executing a very intelligent game plan, but the Terremoto is coming. The yeah, second half yeah. of the fight, you know Leo is still going to be bringing it. And what will become of this lead that I have for Carl? Will he be able to hold on? Will he be able to justify this pace or at least keep continue to get Leo's respect? Yeah. What are some of the adjustments that you would have liked to have seen at that point for Leo Santa Cruz? Well, I, you know, I, I like to see him uh, work his way inside and fainting a little bit. And also, as I said before, he fights at one gear. He just kind of mm -hmm. brings it to you, and he's very, very technically sound. High, got high guard, nice jab, and behind a nice, clean, crisp, straight right hand. He throws to the body well, all this stuff. But it's kind of, you can kind of start to time it, because it comes at you at the same speed all the time. Carl's a world-class fighter, so I, I think Going in, he already knew this was going to be a fight where he was going to have to mentally bite down and execute a game plan despite the fatigue that might be coming. And that happened. Any major surprises in the first five rounds, Al, in terms of how the fight unfolded? I think the fact that Frampton was able to kind of control the pace of the fight a little bit more than we thought he might, and I think Paulie's points are, are, are right on, we knew that Leo Santa Cruz was going to accelerate his effort, and to a great degree, he did. Well... It was a position that Leo Santa Cruz did, has not found himself in. Behind on the scorecards, going into the second half of the fight, how would Terramoto respond? Let's find out. Santa Cruz continues to lean forward, and it continues to pay dividends for Carl Frampton, although they both are scoring in this electrifying exchange. Now Santa Cruz has Frampton on the ropes. They are just teeing off. Santa Cruz landing some shots. In the last round and a half, 
Leo Santa Cruz has done much better. He established himself, he's using the jab more, and he is starting to alter the paradigm of this fight. Switch yourself on, all right? Switch your brain on. You know, I think that Santa Cruz controlled the last two rounds. It's important for Frampton here to come back, and he's doing it. They're both landing big shots. Santa Cruz trying to get busy, but Frampton again along the ropes, doing a good job with that head movement. They call the squared circle the theater of truth, and we have already learned that Carl Frampton, Leo Santa Cruz, two blood and guts warriors with hearts of champions, and yet somebody's owes gotta go here tonight. Oh, there was a right wow. hand by Santa Cruz. Oh. You can feel these punches at ringside. What a fight it has been. We're headed to the final three minutes. The crowd on its feet, as they should be. Big run. Don't, yeah. don't get reckless. Don't, don't, get don't give him any. The crew's better work to the head. Here we go. Two tremendous ambassadors of the sport down to the final three minutes. Leo Santa Cruz coming forward, a sense of urgency. And they continue to throw heavy leather. Unbelievable. Is this round 12 or is it round one? Is he framed this saying, come on, let's go. More than 1,200 punches thrown in this fight. And it may be a crowd of 1,200 Northern Irishmen who sound like a crowd of 12,000. What a night to be ringside in Brooklyn. Stand and cheer. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here at the Barclays Center, the winner by majority decision, and the new WBA featherweight champion of the world, the great Irish champion, Carl the Jackal Frampton. Irish eyes are smiling as Carl Frampton did it, making history tonight, becoming the first native of Northern Ireland to become a two division champion. And what an instant classic it was. Wow, well you guys, uh, we expected Leo Santa Cruz to put the pedal to the metal at the beginning of the second half of the fight and, and he did that, Al. He really did in the, in the sixth and seventh rounds especially and that included a right hand that stunned Carl Frampton. And that was kind of a seminal moment in this fight because now as Paulie said, you knew he had a lead, but you said, you know, is he going to be able to sustain this against Leo Santa Cruz, who we know can fight full 12 rounds of any fight? And, and Santa Cruz was able to really do that in the first part of the second part of that fight. But then we did receive the answer that, yes, Carl Frampton could not only sustain it, but, boy, those championship rounds. I mean, that was just good stuff. Yeah, and that's a credit to a guy like Frampton. Yeah. You know, both of these guys have that championship medal, that championship yes. skill level, as well as that championship mentality in their, in their mind. Santa Cruz sweeps round six and seven on the scorecards. He, has, he tells himself, you know, he obviously went into those rounds saying, you know what, I've got to get into this fight. I've got to make things happen. Now, a guy like Frampton, put yourself in that situation. Mm -hmm. You know you're expecting the Teremoto to, to arrive. You know, you eventually it's going to get there and the pace is going to get uncomfortable. This guy beats you good in round six and seven. A lesser fighter right there right. says to himself, because in that moment, the crowd's going crazy. You're mentally a little unstable. A lesser fighter tells himself, man, I, I had this fight under control. I'm losing control of this fight and you start to decline if you're a lesser fighter. It is very, very difficult. I don't think people understand how difficult it is in that moment to mentally stabilize yourself. And of course, you also got to credit the corner and Shane McGuigan yeah, again, because you, a good corner helps in this situation to kind of not only stabilize yourself, but pick yourself back up and take control of the fight again. And we saw late in the fight in those championship rounds, Frampton rolls to the occasion like a champion. And with all of the action, with all of the punching, with all of the, 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 the adrenaline, the fact that they went at it toe-to-toe -to -toe in rounds 11 and yes. 12, Al, incredible. Those rounds were, this is a good point, Marl, because uh, two things. Not only was Frampton able to 
turn things around. But the fact that both men, knowing it was on the line, were able to produce two of the more exciting rounds of boxing that you'll ever see anywhere is pretty extraordinary. It showed not only the, uh, the conditioning they had, but the mental uh, toughness that both of those men had. Having said all of this, and we'll see, the only people that failed that night, in my opinion, were two of the judges who had it too wide in their well, scoring. And let's look at the scoring, Al, because you're right. One judge had it 117, 111, 116, 112, the other four Frampton. The other one had it a draw, yeah. 114, 114. What do you think of the scores? Well, I think we all, we were sitting at ringside feeling like Frampton deserved sure. an edge in this fight. When we saw these scorecards, 117, 111 makes no sense. You can maybe argue the 116, 112, but I don't really think you can based on this fight. And, and what that does, in my opinion, for boxing fans is it, 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 it throws, it casts a little shadow on the fight that shouldn't be there. Paulie, what were your thoughts on the, the scoring? Well, I've experienced Tom Shrek in the past. You know, I, I, think, I think Tom Shrek just Tom Shrek was the one who saw it 117-111. Yeah. yeah, and he had my fight with Broner 117-111. So I yeah, think yeah, I, I'm yeah. starting to think this guy just writes down a 9-3 scorecard and just sits back and watches the fight like we watch the fight. He forgets he actually has to score it for real. Yeah. You know, but, By round. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, he just puts his 117-111 on the paper well, and he wants to enjoy it. But, but I, I think... The right guy won yes. in a close no fight. Question. I thought maybe 115, 113. Yeah, yeah that makes yeah, sense. But yeah. I think the right guy won in a close fight. Yeah. Um, the thing is, you know, you, you end up talking about this instead of talking about exactly. what a great fight it was. Right, and that's, that, right. that's the shame. So let's talk about how great the fight was. What did you like most about the home stretch? Well, I, I like that both guys proved these are championship yeah. fighters yeah. in their prime youth. They're fighting for pride, the world championship, their legacy, everything on this night. And they fought like that in those last couple of rounds. Yeah, well, let's hear from the two preternaturally talented prize fighters. Leo Santa Cruz goes down to defeat for the first time, while Carl Frampton joins Steve Collins as the only Irishman to win championships in two divisions. I've just made history. You know, I'm the only ever Northern Irishman to win world titles at two different weight divisions. I've just, I've just hey. beat. I've just beat an unbelievable fighter in, in Leo Santa Cruz, a three-weight world champion. You know, it was the toughest, toughest fight of my career. I don't take nothing from Kerplin. He's a great champion, great fighter. I said this in the beginning. It was going to be a tough fight, and it was. But we just won the rematch, and hopefully, you know, in San L.A. Well, guys, after a fight so nice, you know they have to do it twice, and the great news is it's not going to take long. Frampton, Santa Cruz Part 2 is going to be taking place on Showtime Championship Boxing coming up January 28th at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. Carl Frampton has always dreamed about competing in the fight capital of the world, and the hype is beginning to build with press conferences in Belfast. <laughs> And Los Angeles. I know that this rematch is gonna be, you know, very hard too. It's gonna be tough, but that's why we're gonna go in the gym, train, uh, focus, and just go out there and give you guys another fight of the year. This rematch with Leo Santa Cruz is is gonna be an amazing fight. The first one is considered one of the fights of the year. I don't think this can be any different. I think, you know, we're kicking off 2017 with a bang. Well, guys, what a way to kick off the year. We have two big events coming up in January, but I want to talk about the rematch between Leo Santa Cruz and Carl Frampton. And I want to revisit the first fight for a quick second here, Paulie. Leo Santa Cruz's dad battling cancer. He almost pulled out of the fight the first time around. We're not inside his mind, but did you think that had a huge impact on his performance as good as it was? You know, it's hard to say, really. You know, I, I think uh, the friends and naysayers may say, oh, you know what, Santa Cruz wasn't mentally fully in it. You know, to, but I'll tell you this. To fight the way Santa Cruz fought and to bite down mm -hmm. it and, and fight at that pace and, and fight those championship rounds the way he fought them, I, I don't think you can unless you're mentally into the fight. I really don't. And, uh, you know, at day's end, I think that kind of answers that question. Al, Carl Frampton answering many questions, moving up from 122 pounds. His trainer, Shane McGuigan, saying, we've tasted the best of Leo Santa Cruz. Carl Frampton's going to knock out Leo Santa Cruz in the rematch. They're very confident. And by the way, uh, Leo's dad doing much yes, better now. And that, thankfully. again, could play into the fact that he'll be a little more relaxed mm -hmm. uh, heading into this fight. And for Carl Frampton, yes, they had, there was some unknown territory in that fight for them in the first one. 
that unknown territory doesn't exactly exist anymore. And I think that is giving Frampton and McGuigan uh, a, a, definitely a sense of a confidence in this fight. And, you know, Carl Frampton is not a guy that lacks in confidence. Can Carl Frampton improve his power ahead of the January 28th fight? I mean, that's some bulletin board material there when McGuigan is saying he's going to knock him out. I don't, I don't necessarily say think it's about improving your power to stop Leo Santa Cruz. I, I think maybe they see things that they can do more consistently like? against uh, Leo. That left hook seemed yeah. to be a, a real problem for Leo. Maybe they feel like they can find even more traps to set up more left hooks to continue to hurt Leo more often. I don't think necessarily when somebody talks about you're going to get a knockout, it necessarily means they're going to increase their punching power. Mm -hmm. But they may feel they can get the better of Leo in such a way next time around that maybe they may be able to beat him into submission. Hey, maybe that's just bluster. But at the at day's end, that's what they're saying. Cannot wait. They say that the uh, sequels aren't usually as good as the original. I think we may have a trilogy on our hands. You never know.